Good morning, New Beginning Church and our online family and friends. We want to welcome you to the New Beginning Church, where our pastor is Pastor Matthew Alexander Davis. We are here for no other reason but to uplift the name of Jesus. So would you stand to your feet as we sing, What a Mighty God We Serve.
one through four. It is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night on an instrument of ten strings, on the lute, and on the harp with harmonious sounds. For you, Lord, have made me glad through your work. I will triumph in the works of the of your hand. Amen. Oh, I'm too close. Okay. Oh, heavenly and gracious Father, it is once again that we come into the house of the Lord. Thanking you, Lord Jesus, for waking us up this morning to start another day. Lord, I we are and I am so grateful to be here today. Amen, Lord. You gave me the strength, Lord. I might yes, get the pain, but yes, I'm not Lord. giving up. Yes, so none of us should ever give up. Yes, Trust Lord. in the Lord, because he will give you the strength to fight on. Oh, Heavenly Father, I'd like to ask for the world as whole. We're in such trouble right now, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come down and intercede, yes, Lord, Lord, on those that has left you, yes, that don't know you. So many of them don't know you in the pardon of their sins. They just keep going. Well, I'll do something about it tomorrow. Tomorrow's not promised. Yes, Lord. So, Lord, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, for letting me be here today. I didn't know how, but I was, I was determined. And yes, Lord, he will give you the strength. I'm a little weak in my body, but I'm not weak in my heart. I'm my love for you, Jesus. I just never grow weak. Lord, please continue to bless us all, because we all need you, Lord. You never know what you're going to go through, but you are always there. And I'm so grateful, Lord, for my church. I'm grateful for my pastor, my, his wife, for our church members, because when something happens, it's good to know that somebody want to take care of you or he can call on you. So, Lord, let us always be those that love you, serve you, and please you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord, yes.
this morning that God has really been good. Let me just remind you, it was not your alarm clock that woke you up this morning. It was God's divine love that reached down from heaven and touched you with his fingers because God has and God is always he's good. God's been good. God has. God has been so good to us. Hallelujah to the Lamb. He's been good. Yes, Lord. Let me call your attention to Numbers chapter 21 in the Old Testament. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. Numbers chapter 21, verses 7 and 9, 7 through 9. Numbers chapter 21, verses 7 through 9. Yeah, God has been good. Regardless of what you're going through. He's still the awesome and the amazing God. And he has been good. He is good. And he continues to be good. He is the awesome and the amazing God. Numbers chapter 21, verses 7 through 9. When you found it, you will discover these words. 
Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he will take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. Then the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole. And it shall be that everyone who is bidden, when he looks up at it, shall live. And Moses made a bronze serpent and put it on a pole. And so it was. If the serpent had bidden anyone, when he looked at the bronze serpent, he lived. I want to talk about God, the way maker. God, the way maker. We need God to make a way in America. And we don't need God to make a way later. We need God to make a way right now. Many of us in this room need God to make a way in our lives. And we're asking God to make a way out of no way. I come to tell you today that the God we serve, the God of the Bible, is the way maker. In your sickness, he makes a way. In your heartaches, he makes a way. In your troubles, he makes a way. In your defeats, God makes a way. With pink slips, yellow slips, and red slips, God is able to make a way out of no way. I want to say to you this morning, if you're about to give up, if you're about to give in, if you're about to give out, hang on in there. Because God is a way maker. Matter of fact, he's not just a way maker. He is the way maker who makes a way out of no way. I'm just going to drop three points, and I'm going to leave you alone today. My first point is you have to be appreciative. My second point is you have to be careful. And my third point is you have to be patient. God makes a way for us even when we are not in, in a position to have a way made. He makes a way for us even when we don't deserve it. God makes a way for us when life chips are down. God is the way maker. When we tune in to Numbers chapter 21, we find the Israelites, God's chosen people. They are traveling, they are moving, and as they are traveling and moving, they are encountered by the Canaanites. Let me tell you, there's a bully on every playground. There's a bully in every school. There is a bully in every neighborhood. And I dare tell you today, there's a bully at every church. Uh, not at this church, but at every other church. There's a bully at every church. And, and a bully wants to take you out. And if it's not at your church, it may be at your house. If it's not at your house, it's in your neighborhood. If the bully is not in your neighborhood, you may just be the bully. I want to tell you there's a bully on the scene everywhere we go. The Canaanites decided that they're going to run over the Israelites. They decided that they were going to defeat the Israelites. They decided as the Israelites came through that they were going to give them a real good whipping. But the Israelites called on God. My first point is you need to be appreciative. The Israelites called on God. Verse 2 says, so the Israelites made a vow to God and said, if you will indeed deliver this people into my hands. The Israelites want God to deliver the Canaanites into their hands. In other words, they wanted God to fight their battle. Yeah, God has a way of fighting our battles even when we can't fight for ourselves. God has a way of positioning us where we don't even have to worry about it, where God can fight our battles. He says, if you would indeed deliver us, 
and deliver these people in our hands, then we will ultimately destroy the cities. What he, what he was saying is that, God, we won't leave anything to, for you to worry about. We will destroy the entire city. Verse 3 says, and the Lord... And, and the, the Lord listened to the voice of Israel and delivered them up, delivered up the Canaanites, delivered them up, so they destroyed, the Israelites destroyed the city. I'm telling you, God gave them victory. God blessed them. God did for them what they had asked God to do. Are you asking God to do something? I want to tell you, God is a way maker. He keeps right on making a way. Regardless of what you're going through, God knows how to make a way. God knows how to shut the bullies down. Yeah, yeah. You have to be appreciative. The problem here is they were not appreciative. We have to appreciate what God has done for us. We have to appreciate where God has taken us. We have to appreciate what God is doing for us right now. God has given us many victories in the past, and we need to appreciate the victories that God has already brought us through. You remember that sickness? God brought you through it. You remember that heartache? God kept you in the midst of it. You remember when you were unemployed and God gave you a new job that was better than the one you had before? You remember when you didn't have a spouse, and now God giving you a brand new good spouse. You remember when you were shut out and you remember when you wanted to get out of a bad marriage and God delivered you. Let me tell you, God has a way of delivering us in the midst of our stuff. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether we got in there ourselves or somebody else put us in there or God allowed us to get in there. God allowed the Israelites to come upon the Canaanites. But in the midst of it, God blessed them and gave them the victory. How many of you want to be on the winning team? How many of you want to be on the winning side? How many of you want God to speak to your troubles and your troubles fade away? I want to be on a winning team. One brother said to me, he said, I know who's going to win the Super Bowl. My team is going to win the Super Bowl. I said, how do you know? We don't even know who's going to be in the Super Bowl. He said, yeah, but my team is going to win the Super Bowl. Well, which is your team? The team that wins is going to be my team. He says that regardless of who goes through the Super Bowl, regardless of who plays the Super Bowl, I'm going to be on the winning team. I'm going to tell you today, you don't have to wait to see what team you're going to be on. God is the team that you ought to be on, and God ought to be the one you're appreciative to. God, God, God says to us today, we need to be appreciative. Be appreciative. All you have to do is take a trip right outside of Houston or right downtown Houston or right around the corner from where you live, and you will understand that you need to be appreciative. Our young folk, our young folk need to be appreciative. I remember my daughter, she was about seven years old. We were walking through the zoo, and as we walked through the, loo the zoo, she wanted something. I guess it was cotton candy. And I said, no, you've had enough sweet. We can't have cotton candy today. We, we can't do the cotton candy today. And she said, I wish he was my daddy. <laughs> because he had a little boy in the cotton candy line. He, he, he bought his little boy cotton candy. She said, I wish he was my daddy. <laughs> and as crazy as I am. Brother Irvin, I stopped that man who was a light hue man who didn't look like her and didn't look like me. I stopped him. I said, sir, this little girl wants you to be her daddy. And I handed him her hand and I walked away and she started crying and she started boohooing. I said to her, you better be appreciative of what you have because there's always something out there you think you want that you will never need. I fixed that that day. Ever since that day, she been holding my hand. Ever since that day, she been calling me daddy. Ever since that day, she's been appreciative of whatever I bought, whatever I said, whatever I did. You better be appreciative of what you have. One woman said, I, God, I prayed for a man and God sent me a piece of man. You better appreciate the piece of man you got. You better appreciate that piece of man. You, you, better, you better love that piece of, piece of man. You need to hang out with that piece, piece of man because some sisters don't have a piece of man. God has given us blessings. 
so many blessings that we can't even entertain them. We like little children when we go to our room. When children go to their room, they got toys in there they hadn't played with in the last 10 years. We like children. When you go to children's room, they roll the truck two, three times, and the truck sits there and takes up dust. We like little children. They play with the doll two or three times, and now they want a new doll, a bigger doll, a talking doll, a doll that will, will be equipped for AIN Wi-Fi. We are like children. The Israelites were like little children. God blessed them. God kept them. And God gave them everything they needed, even when he didn't give them everything they wanted. I stopped by on my way to the rapture just to say you better be appreciative. Be appreciative of what you have. Because somebody else doesn't have it, be appreciative of where you've been. Because somebody else hadn't left, be appreciative of where you're going. Because somebody else is not going. God says to us we need to be appreciative. The second point is you better be careful. Be careful, be careful. When you look at verses 1 through 3, I say to you, be, be appreciative. You look at verses 4 through 6, I say be careful because the Israelites complain against God and complain against Moses. You may not appreciate, you may not like everything your leader says nor your leader do. But even at the New Beginning Church, I could send you to some churches of my pastor friends, and you will run back to the New Beginning Church and say, I ain't doing what they're doing over there. I ain't having it like that. So we have to be careful. Be careful. The Israelites complain against God and complain against Moses. And because of their complaints, God sent fiery serpents. God sent snakes. It wouldn't have taken me 24 hours. If God just sent one snake, it wouldn't have taken me 24 hours to get my life right with God. Now, the devil didn't send the snake, but God sent the snake. These people were complaining. They were complaining. They complained about dying in the wilderness. They complained about no food. They complain about no water, and they complain about this worthless bread that God been feeding us. Be careful, be careful, be careful, because somebody has no bread. Be careful, because somebody has no food. Be careful, because somebody can't afford to buy water. Be careful, because somebody can't get their hands on their thirst quenched by water. You need to be careful how you complain. I say to you, be careful, be careful, be careful. And then they had the nerve, the audacity, the gall to say, this worthless bread that you've been feeding us. Lord, we don't want that. We don't want that. Now we sing a song, bread from heaven, bread from heaven, feed me till I want no more. They had bread and they didn't appreciate it. Be careful how you complain against your leader. Be careful how you complain against your God. And when they complain... They really were not telling the truth. They said they had no water. But when they got to the place called Mara, the water was bitter. So there was water there. And God, the way maker, God took the water, the bitter water, and made bitter water sweet. He, Moses took a branch and laid it in the water. And all of a sudden, bitter water became sweet. Be careful when you say that you don't have any food. Because when they were in the desert, God dropped food down from heaven for them. Be careful when you say you don't have no bread because God made a way for them and gave them bread. It's like, it's like a person, you go and you ask them for something. And they see you coming, they know you're going to ask. Say, say, can you loan me a few dollars or can you give me a few dollars? I like to ask them to give it to me. Can you give me a few dollars? And they say, I don't, and I quote, I don't have any money, end quote. Now, the fact is, if you got a penny to your name, you got money. So the truth of the matter is you do have some money. You may not have it on you. Maybe you got it in the bank. Maybe you got it in the savings. But you do have something. Be careful how you complain about what you do not have and appreciate what God has already done. 
So as a result of their complaining, God unleashed some serpents. Because they complained, God unleashed serpents that began to bite them. And the Bible says many of them died because God unleashed serpents. Let me tell you, God has a way of dealing with us if we don't be careful. God has a way of dealing with us. It was sin for them to complain against God and complain against the leader. It was sin, and God has a way of dealing with our sin. God has a way of, of dealing with us. He can get our attention. Is God trying to get your attention? Is God doing some things that, that you don't like and, and he's trying to get your attention? God has said, hey, wait a minute. I'm over here. Let's get some time together. The, be careful how you complain because God knows how to get your attention. Be careful. Be careful how you complain. Be careful how you, how you fight against leadership. Be careful how you fight against God. They didn't just fight against Moses. They spoke out against God. Let me tell you, he's God that sees everything. He, he's God that hears everything. He is omnipotent, meaning he's all-powerful, and he's almighty. He's omnipresent, meaning he's all places at the same time. He is omniscient, meaning he knows everything, even before we say it, even before we think it. God already knows it. And he is sovereign, meaning that God does what he wants to do, when he wants to do it, to whom he chooses to do it. He's God all by himself. Be careful how you address. God. He's not the man upstairs. He's not the big boss man. He's not the God that sits up there and then he's your buddy. He's not that God. He is God who sits high, looks low. He has a whole universe in his hand. The young folk would say it like this. He has a whole world in his hand. He got mama's little baby in his hand. He has daddy's little children in his hand. He has a whole world in his hand. He is God almighty. He's a way maker. Be appreciative, be careful, and be patient. In verses 7 through 9, now God has set snakes, and they are now biting them. And as they, as they get bit by the snakes, now they want to reckon their lives with God. Let me tell you, if you walked away from God, God is waiting on you. If you have come to the conclusion that God is not worth your time, God is still available to you. If you have spoken out against God, spoken out against his leader, spoken out against his church, God still loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life. If you are here and God has left you here, he's left you here for a, a reason, and that reason is to glorify him. Verses number 7 and 8, they had to repent. They had to repent. Look at what they said. Verse 7, therefore the people came to Moses and said, uh, we have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Now they're asking the same man they spoke against to talk to God on their behalf. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? It's always the person who you don't like. It's always the person that you speak against. It's always the person that you have pushed aside that when you get in trouble, you want that person to go before God on your behalf. I, I, know, I know there are people who, who don't like preachers. They don't have time for pastors. And they really have come, come to the conclusion that preachers can't do anything for them. But when the baby is born, they will bring the baby to the pastor to bless the baby. The same rascal they don't care about. The same rascal that they dismiss themselves for. They will bring the baby to be blessed. And you ought to. And you ought to do it. And the pastor ought to do it without any ill figures. They bring the baby to be blessed. And throughout their lives, whether they are children or adults, they depend on God to keep them. Let me tell you, if, if God doesn't keep you, you can't be kept. 
If God doesn't keep your mind, you can't be kept. If God doesn't keep move your, moving your feet, you can't be kept. If God doesn't move your tongue, you can't be kept. I'm standing here now. I'm speaking to you. And in the midst of my sins, if God chooses to take my mind away, I won't know what to say next. But because I honor him and I praise him, I thank him for keeping my mind. He's God all by himself. I I just have to be patient. When you look at the text, first thing they had to do is they had to repent. I'm telling you, when you speak against God, when you speak against the leader, you ought to repent. He said, he said, they say to Moses, Moses, now, we need you to pray about this. Now they were dogging him out. Moses, you've gotten us out here in this wilderness, and we're going to die out here. At least we had a dying place back in Egypt. At least we had a place to bury our dead back in Egypt. Now you have gotten us out here and we are going to die in the wilderness. Let me tell you, regardless of how deep in the wilderness you're in, God knows where you are. God knows who you are. God knows what's going on with you. And God has not forgotten you. I think I'll say that again. God knows where you are. God knows who you are. God has not forgotten you because God is the way maker and he makes a way out of no way. He is looking to bless you even right now. That's why I have to be appreciative. That's why I have to be careful and I have to make sure that I'm patient. It says that they called on Moses. Moses prayed for them. And let me tell you, regardless of what the people put the leader through, he has to do it God's way. Regardless of what they've said about him, regardless of of how they talked about him, regardless of how they misused him, and regardless if they show up when they want something or not, it is the preacher's responsibility, the leader's responsibility to do it God's way. He can't hold any grudges. He can't can't choose one family over the other. He can't do things for this one that he won't do for that one. He still has to just sit back and do it God's way. He has to do it God's way. Brother, Brother Hopper, he got to do it God's way. He can't fight back. He can't, he can't cuss them out like they cuss him out. He got to take it as it comes. And he just has to continue to do it God's way. If you are leading, just, be, just remember that sometime is lonely at the top. Not because the position makes you a lonely person, but sometimes people just don't like you. And you don't have to do anything to make them not like you. Sometimes they don't like the clothes you wear. Sometimes they don't like the way you wear your hair. Sometimes they don't like the way you walk with confidence. People don't like you when you're in leadership just because you're in leadership. They are criticizing a woman who locked up thugs. They they are criticizing a woman that is more than qualified. They are criticizing a woman because... They say that she's not black. Let me tell you, we don't vote black. We vote, we don't vote black at all. We vote for those who are qualified. You vote for the other guy because he's not black? We have to understand that God has a place in leadership, and leadership is, is, is where you are being led somewhere, and you may not want to go there. A good leader always take people where they don't want to go because they can't see it. They, they can't understand it. And then sometimes leadership get discouraged because of so much trouble behind him or her. They fought against Moses. They fought against God. They were not careful. They were not appreciative. But you better be patient. You got to be patient. The Bible says, the Bible says in verse, verse number nine, Moses made a serpent, a bronze serpent. He made a fiery serpent, a flaming serpent, and he put it on a pole and he didn't do it on his own. He did it because God ordered him to. Leadership ought to do what God orders him to do. That's why there's no need for a vote when there's good leadership. There's no need for a vote because when we look at the Bible, every time they voted, it was a mistake. 
Every time they voted, it was a mistake. So it is, it is the leader's obligation. The leader has to look to God, tell the people what God has said to him, and then the people ought to follow the leader. And if you can't follow that leader, it's time for you to get you a new leader. Get you a leader that you can follow because it gets to a point in your life where you're fighting against leadership until you can't be blessed when you fight leadership. And no, the leader is not always not right. No, the leader doesn't always have the right answer. Matter of fact, when you ask me a question, I'm praying, Lord, give me the answer right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, give me the right scripture to go to. Lord, bless me to be able to answer, not in my will, but in your will, Lord. Lord, have mercy, bless me. Some of y'all call me for, for Bible study questions. And when you call me, I, I don't know it all, so I, I shouldn't act like I know it all. I would say to you, wait a minute, give me a few minutes now. Let me pull that text up. Or I would say, I don't know right now. Let me call you back. <laughs> or I would say, now look, let's sit down and let's talk about this thing simply because I don't know it all. And because you are honest enough to say you don't know it all, it makes you a better leader. Be patient. Be patient. You have to be patient with God and be patient with the leader. You have to be patient with God and patient with the leader because God is not a bellhop. God is not a, 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 a person that picks up your bag and takes them where they want to go. Uh, you, you, God is not, not, not a chauffeur that chauffeurs you around and, and make things happen. God is not somebody that, that beat up on your bullets for you every time you go and get yourself in trouble. We ought to be in the presence of God, so much so, until in the midst of God's presence, we know he's there when we can't feel him. We know he's there when we can't see him. We know he's there because he's God, and he is everywhere. So Moses made a bronze serpent, verse number 9, made a bronze serpent and put it on a pole. And so it was. If a person was bitten by a serpent, that person would look up at the, bur the, the burning serpent, the bronze serpent, and they would be healed and they would be saved. Many had already died, but all you had to do is look up. And the, if you were bitten, all you have to do is look up at the serpent. The apostle John picks this thought up when Jesus is talking to Nicodemus in John chapter 3. Jesus says to Nicodemus, you must be born again. And we got that famous verse there in verse number 16 that says to us that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Don't just read verse 16. Back back up to verse 13 where verse 13 says that this is a symbol. When you look at, at, at Numbers chapter 21, this is a symbol of Jesus hanging on a pole. He says, he says, whatever you do, have them to look up at the serpent and they will be saved and they will be healed. Even when God knows you messed up over him and even when God knows that you continue to sin, God makes a way out of no way. Yeah, God keeps a way and he keeps on making a way. He makes a way out of no way. He makes a way because he is the way maker. The songwriter got it right. He is the way maker. He's the miracle worker. He is the promise keeper. He is the light in darkness. He is the great I am. He makes a way out of no way. The songwriter got it right. The songwriter says, you are here. Even when we can't see you, you are in the midst. We are, even when you are, we can't uh, uh, operate around it, you are here. You are working in this place. You are, you are the way maker. You are the miracle worker. You are the promise keeper. You are the light in the darkness. My God, that's who you are. Yeah. The songwriter got it right. He says that, my God, that's who you are. You are touching hearts. You are healing every heart. You are turning lives around. You are mending every heart. You are the way maker. And then he stopped for a moment and gets happening. And he says, I worship you. I worship you. Let me tell you, when you're patient with God, you ought to spend some time and worship. If your, if your blessing is on the other side of the door, if your blessing is on the other side of the door, if your blessing is on the other side of the door, you ought to be praising him and worshiping him in the hallway before you get in. 
The songwriter got it right, God, you are the way maker. You are the miracle worker. You are the promise keeper. You are the light in darkness. My God, that's who you are. That's who he is. That's who he is. That's who he is. And then he says, Jesus, that's who you are. Even when I don't see you, even when I don't feel you, I know you're working. You never stop working. Even when I can't track you, I know you're working. God, that's who you are. Oh, God, your name is above every name. Your name, God, is above every name. The songwriter says it like this. In the midst of depression, your name is above it. In loneliness, your name is above it. In disease, your name is above it. In cancer, your name is above it. In confusion, your name is above it. In discouragement, your name is above it. In fatigue, your name is above it. Even in sin, your name is above it. His name is above every name. And for that reason, Lord, I worship you. Have you ever got to a moment in your life where you just stood still and said, Lord, I've been asking you for a very long time. But while I'm waiting, while I'm being patient, Lord, I worship you. I magnify you. I lift your name. I, I thank you for who you are. I thank you for what you do. God, I worship you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I magnify you. You are a way maker. You are a promise keeper. You are the light in darkness. Lord, I worship you. And finally, when we look at John chapter 3, Jesus says to Nicodemus that if just as Moses held up the bronze serpent, verse 13, John chapter 3, just as Moses lifted up the bronze serpent in the wilderness, John chapter 3, verses 13 through 17, just as Moses lift up the serpent in the wilderness, God so loved the world. God loved the world until he, he symbolizes it in, in Numbers 21, and he brings it into fruition in John chapter 3. He says this is a symbol of Jesus being lifted. Jesus the Christ being lifted on a pole. Just like the snake was lifted on a pole, Jesus hung on a pole. Just like the snake was lifted on a pole, and when they looked to the snake, they were healed. If you look to Jesus, you can be healed. If you look to Jesus, the Son of God, you will be saved. God keeps working, and he keeps making a way out of no way. God is a way maker. God is a way maker. He is the promise keeper. He's a miracle worker. He's the light in darkness. What is your darkness? Let me tell you, over 2,000 years ago, they took my Lord and your God. They nailed him tight to the cross. They hung him on a pole. They, they, they spiked his feet. They hung him on a pole. They lifted him high. They dropped him low. They stretched him wide. He died on a pole over 2,000 years ago. He made a way for us on a pole. He, he died on the cross, I tell you. They took him off the cross. They laid him in a barber tomb. It was a barber tomb because he didn't need it too long. Early that third day morning, he got up with all power and heaven and earth in his hand. He's a way maker. He makes a way out of no way. He keeps right on making a way. He makes a way even when we don't know a way. He makes a way when we can't see a way. He makes a way when we can't hear a way. He's a way maker. Hang in there. Don't give up. Don't give out. Don't give in. He's a way maker. Hallelujah to the Lamb. That same Jesus that got up early that third day morning, he's coming back again to make a way out of no way. He's coming to get a church without a spot or a wrinkle. Jesus the Christ, he is the way maker. He is the company keeper. He is the horse pouring in the valley. His name is Jesus. And his blood that flowed down through Calvary's cross made a way out of no way. His name is Jesus the Christ. And the only way we're going to get to heaven is receive Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. The door is open. The invitation is extended. Because he is here. He's making a way out of no way. His name is Jesus. We worship.
is the way maker. Are you here today? Are you hearing today? If you've never received Jesus as your personal Savior, this is your moment. We worship him because he's a way maker. The door is open. Will you come? is open. Will you come? Lord, we worship you. His name is Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You're working. You're working. the way maker. He is the way maker. Thank you, Daniel and Arelli. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. We praise the awesome and the amazing God. I didn't know they were singing that song. And they didn't know that I had changed my message from God the healer to God the way maker. So God has a way of blessing us and leading us every single day. We thank God for who he is and what he has already done. We serve the awesome and the amazing God. Our Bible study, we learned that the Spirit of God is speaking. And in our church service, we have confirmation that the Spirit of God is speaking. God is able to bless us and he has continually blessed us. And we thank him for who he is and what he has done already done.
Hallelujah. Why don't we thank God for who he is and what he has done. We serve the awesome, we serve the amazing, the amazing God. And, and I'm going to tell you, God makes a way out of no way. When, when we get ourselves in trouble, he, he makes a way out of no way. When, when we push against God, God makes a way out of no way. When, when we fight against him, when we fight against his leadership, he makes a way out of no way. He is, he is the amazing, he is, he's just God. He's, he is, he is just God. We thank God for just being God, amen. We thank God for just being God. Well, church family, you know what time it is? It's offering time. <laughs> it is time for us to give our tithes and our offering and our gifts as unto the Lord. Uh, the ushers, they are coming with envelopes, so if you uh, desire an envelope, you can grab one from the usher as they pass them out. And as the ushers are doing so, if you would like to give electronically, then you can do so. You, uh, you can give through sale. Account for that is lifting about Jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting about Jesus at yahoo.com. Blessed that we ask you to bless 
Lord, be a first, let it be used as a part of the further of the kingdom. Lord, we thank you. Lord, you continue to keep us, guide us, and bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We have a, a new announcing clerk, and children be ready because everybody will be doing this. Hold that paper, please. Happy birthday to people in September. On the 14th, we have Carrington Maylow. On the 20th, we have Rick Orr. And on the 29th, we have Patricia Allen. Robotics on Saturdays at NBC. Parents, you are encouraged to get your children involved in robotics. Robotics are offered at NBC on Saturday mornings. If you are interested, please contact Dr. D. Wallace. Turning Hearts Music Ensemble. Reaching youth for Christ through music. Friday night music classes for youth will be offered at New Beginning Church starting this week, Friday, September the 6th from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Please contact Sister Carolyn Davis for more information. New Beginning Church celebrates 20th pastoral anniversary. <laughs> Dr. Matthew A. Davis on Sunday, September 8, 2024, 10.30 a.m. Our guest speaker is Pastor Richard Booker, Little Zion MV Church. Amen. Grandparents Day. We will, celebrate we will celebrate all grandparents on Sunday, September 15th. During our 10.30 a.m. worship service, Please invite your grandparents and grandchildren to NBC. Grandparents and, grandpar grand and grandchildren photos will be taken immediately after service. Friends and Family Day. Please mark your calendars for Sunday, September 29th. We will welcome Pastor William Earl Freed and the Mississippi Delta Churches from Indianola, Mississippi, to join us in celebrating Family and Friends Day during the 10.30 a.m. worship service. Each member is encouraged to invite five guests so we can fill the pews. Volunteers are needed. Please see Sister Cora Woods for more information. You are invited, taking off the mask, you are invited to a mental health symposium and networking op opportunity. Presented by Dr. Jocelyn Jones of the Holy Trinity MB Church on Sunday, uh, Saturday, October 19th, 2024, 10 a.m. Location, New Beginning Church. It's tea time. Taylor Memorial Baptist Church, Daughters of the King, invite you to our annual Breast Cancer Awareness. Judson Robinson Jr. Community Center on Saturday, October 26th on 10 a.m. I mean, 11 a.m. Sister Carolyn Davis will be one of the honorees if you are available to attend. Please purchase your ticket from Sister Carolyn Davis. Upcoming events, Bible listening and journaling. Tomorrow, September 2nd, we start week 36, Philippians through Colossians 2. Please continue to listen and study God's word. Prayer request. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Mark, 10, Mark 11 through 24. Amen. And we are praying for Lindsay Cotton. 
Lillian Darrington, the Johnson family, Leah Williams, Sandra Steptoe, Sydney Chua, Beverly Wallace, Patrice Caskey, Chad Warner, Terry Lewis, Doris Bridgeforth, Araya Carey Spencer, Kevin and Katrina Whitlock, Alvin Powell, Lula Richard, R Vivian Oslohoff, Paula Hornsby, Ed Brennan and family, Jacqueline Torres, Raymond Alfred Jr., Al Brinson, Terrence Miller, Laborers of the Harvest, Harvest and World Peace. And we just want to thank Alexander for <laughs> doing our announcements for him today. Great job. Thank you, Alexander. Father God, we thank you now, Lord. We bless you. We thank you, Father, for, for blessing us. We know, Father God, you are the way maker. You're the healer. You're the comforter. You bless us in spite of us. Lord, we thank you, Father God, that we have an opportunity to call on you. Lord, we ask you to heal and strengthen. Lord, make a way. Lord, bless everybody on the prayer list. We pray, Father God, that you encourage them. We ask you to bless them that they don't give up. We pray, Father God, that you continue to walk with them, that they will continue to walk with you. Lord, bless us, Father God, now that we will see your miracle work in power. Even in our presence, bless and heal. Even as we wait, even as we're patient, bless us, Father God, that we will see those on our prayer list experience great miracles through you. We bless your name, we honor you, and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. We want to thank our visitors for visiting with us today. We want to recognize those from the New Covenant Church, Pastor McClendon, Pastor Anthony McClendon. Thank you also so much for being, being present with us, with us today. Let us turn our hearts toward communion, where we celebrate the great things that God has done through Jesus, Jesus the Christ. Communion is that period where Jesus says, as often as we do it, we show forth his death and his suffering until he comes, comes again. Let us make sure that our hearts are right, that we have no iniquity against anyone. The Apostle Paul says some have, have drank and they have drank themselves to sleep. Some have eaten and they have eaten themselves to sleep because their hearts there were not right with God. Nothing is more important at this junction in your life than confessing your sins asking God to forgive you and focus on communion. Jesus says, as often as we do it, we show forth his death and his suffering until he come again. Father God, we thank you now, Lord, for blessing us, for forgiving us, for saving us. Now bless us as we come before you for communion. Bless us, Father God, that our hearts will be turned toward you, that we will hold no iniquity in our hearts, that we will be blessed by you. Lord, we come to recognize what Jesus has already done. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for his life. We thank you for his sacrifice. We thank you for his death, burial, and resurrection. We pray that you continue to bless us. Lord, we pray that you bless the table. Bless the communion. Bless the bread. And bless the drink. That we would not drink damnation into our souls. And that we would not fall asleep. Lord, we thank you now. We bless your name. And we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank God.
Jesus and precious on the wheel to the front. His disciples, he took the bread, he blessed it, he broke it, he ate all of it. He said, This is my body. He held up the cup and he said, This is the blood for the remissions of your sins. Drink ye all of it. Would you pass your, into, your empties toward the walls, please? And First impression will pick them up for you. Why don't we stand on our feet and fellowship with our neighbor next to us and around us and everybody in the room. 